Hello and welcome to the Horoscope Vault, a podcast that explores the world through the lens of astrology with a view to supporting you through the crazy ups and downs and in making more confident decisions through life's chapters. I'm Charlie, an associate member of the American Federation of Astrologers and astrology reader for radio's The Bob and Sherry Show. And this episode looks at the lucky aspect of Jupiter and Uranus making a conjunction this week, April 20th. If you want to know how long this luck will last and what it might look like for your sign, there's all of that and more right here. I'll forecast using the sun in your sign as the first house point of the chart, which is called the solar charting method. It does give you the basis of what's going on for your sign, but if you want to get really specific, combine the predictions for your sun sign and your rising sign and make sure to listen all the way through to find out why and how to use your earth sign too for a personalised outlook without having to get a reading. I hope you get to make the most of your life. So Jupiter conjunct Uranus this year's biggest wow aspect. And an aspect is when two planets have a relationship which is different to a transit or an ingress. An ingress is when a planet leaves one sign and enters another. So the symbolism takes on a different style. Its meaning gets filtered through the new sign. Like how next month Jupiter will leave Taurus where it's been since 2023, early 2023, and then it enters Gemini where it's not going to be very comfortable, but more about that another time. The original ingress of Jupiter into Taurus began May 16th, 2023. Like how next month Jupiter will leave Taurus where it's been since May 2023, and it will enter Gemini where it's not very comfortable, but more about that another time. So the ingress of Jupiter back May last year and the transit of its movement through Taurus was all about Jupiter putting its expanding touch on all things earthly, which when broke down, if you caught the Taurus season episode, you'll remember that Taurus is to do with money, banks, economy, it's to do with food. And food costs are pretty high, that's definitely one thing. And I think that will lessen when Jupiter moves into Gemini, but Jupiter in Taurus personally, more intimately, is about growing stability for yourself. It's about material possessions and it's about literal abundance or lack of resources. This might be the desire to accumulate resources because of not having them or it might be the actual having of those things. And this cycle made it not only correct, but also very important to focus on financial expansion and opportunities for prosperity. There's a season for everything and this past year put greater emphasis on practical stuff, earthly comforts, general financial needs. And this came off the back of the ingress of Uranus into Taurus, which began a few years before. It started on May 15th, 2018. And the Uranus into Taurus ingress started the shakeup of traditional values, particularly in areas related to money, possessions, the environment, all those Taurian subjects. And from 2018 onwards, Things got sticky financially with some extreme ups for some people and extreme loss for others and then the rest just oscillating between the two. Uranus through Taurus started a few year cycle of unexpected changes, technological innovations and disruptions in financial systems. I remember the GameStop short squeeze fell within this time in 2021 and the Bitcoin wild ride to the moon as they call it in stock market astrology was around November 2021. A lot of people made a lot of money on those internet-based technological kind of going against the grain progressive things. Uranus in Taurus isn't just finance, it can prompt revolutions in agriculture, sustainable living and the way that you just approach or look at resources. So if you have had to get creative with your possessions, with your food, with your needs since 2018, then this cycle might be the reason why. Uranus creates this need to freshen up, enliven and rethink things regarding your relationship with resources. And then that starting 2018, then Jupiter came along in 2023 to put some more pressure on that. And now these two planets meet up in conjunction in Taurus. So it's like taking those two planetary symbol situations, so big surprising financial ups and downs, plus a need for innovation, expansion and luck, 
and it smashes them together. It blends the meanings and they act as support to one another. The more out there and spontaneous and rebellious and doing things differently you are, then the more luck you can have. And the more you maintain faith that different is the best approach, then you are well on your way to surviving whatever, however, this weird evolutionary future, whatever direction that's going in. Jupiter and Uranus meet up every 12 to 14 years-ish, depending on retrograde phases, and they meet in different signs. So, for example, the last big Jupiter-Uranus conjunction was in 2010, and then again January 4th, 2011. That was, like, twice in close proximity because of a retrograde phase. And this happened in the sign of Pisces, where the theme was survival, regardless of conditions. So, this was a time where you may have done what you needed to do to survive and to move forward in that part of your life. It was pure survival at that time. And then prior to that, these two planets met in Aquarius. This was in 1997, which was about receiving outside reinforcement of your potential while feeling maybe less than capable. It was a boost and a need to find freedom by listening to the unique perspectives others had on you. The positive the congratulatory, the recognition of your uniqueness. In 1997, that was what kick-started that particular Uranus-Jupiter cycle. And the pattern goes back in the 12 to 14 year increments, but the actual last meetup of these two in the sign of Taurus was 1941. And in 1941, the United States was still recovering from the Great Depression. And without going too much down that rabbit hole, because it can get heavy, there were lots and lots of war issues such as the attack on Pearl Harbor and lots of other stressful country relations. And presently, yeah, life is not without its battles everywhere in the world. So that's definitely apt. Looking at this transit for you individually, expect doors to swing open that were closed. If you harness everything that's weird, because Jupiter is really vast and expansive, so that's what it does. It opens gates and it points towards something bigger. Whether you recognise those opportunities as better or not doesn't mean that they are not some kind of improvement. It's just that maybe you don't see it initially. And as the ruler of Sagittarius, Jupiter's symbol is the centaur, which is half human, half beast. And it combines the power of both those creatures to move fast into luck. And its symbolic promises are a period of good fortune with difficult times coming to an end. You are being given not only a gift, but also a lift in some way, some kind of help. And blocks are being removed, but there is a catch. You won't be able to kick back and rest and just let the blessings arrive. That would be a very Venus planet thing. With this conjunction, you will be required in some way to attend to what you set into place in order to reap the rewards and you must nurture and cultivate whatever projects or events that you started a bit like a payment due on that thing if you started something then you have to continue to show up for it so yes there is amazing luck just don't neglect things or become lax in your endeavors which are also traits of jupiter and it's sign sagittarius to just let the good things roll on in or should I say roll on by, because of having too much faith. Because Jupiter can symbolise feeling happy and complacent. Paired with Uranus, there's a sudden bolt of surprise that causes a bit of fortunate chaos. Because Uranus is known as the Great Awakener, it's here to wake you up to something. It's the higher octave of Mercury. It breaks the rules and smashes structures with its message. It's the planet of genius and intuition, like a sudden light bulb idea that comes from what seems like out of nowhere. Uranus is the revolutionary symbol and it brings about necessary change which can no longer be resisted. So it does give the opportunity to miss out on luck if you resist or to miss out on luck if you sit back and just expect it to come in for you. It's worth mentioning that while these planets do have an impact on your personal chart, especially if they aspect any personal planets, they are social in their effects first. So generational sweeping changes are like the top tier effect. So things like the news for the next few days to a week 
could be super surprising with the feeling of maybe everything getting turned upside down. And Uranus is the planet of technology, so you might have to incorporate a new tool, a machine or computer, or we might see new progress in those areas. And this conjunction highlighting Uranus's journey through Taurus could also be to do with the ride of earning money through the World Wide Web or jobs involving the internet and phones and television sets and computers and things like artificial intelligence could feature strongly. Uranus is also the planet of air, storms and lightning, anything to do with flights or messages carried through the air through electrical waves. Jupiter touching on that might expand and increase activity in those areas or there might be things like compromised internet information which very weirdly works out for the better somehow that would be something like compromised internet information leaking truth to people who need want and deserve to know the truth it's not that your private information gets into the hand of someone else and somehow that's better for you it's finding out things that work in your favor and There could be improvements in flight technology. There could be all kinds of gadgety applied science and emerging tech stuff that shows up around this time. And it is a full cycle. It's not like everything's going to concentrate to happen at this moment. There are steps along this 12 to 14 year cycle where what's initiated now develops and shows up a little bit further. So July 2026, we do have one of the next phases of this transit that you know when that episode comes at that time we'll probably reflect back to this episode the happenings from now are going to be even more positive and integrated then something really interesting about Uranus and its key theme of being alternative sexuality and gender identity are connected here I saw this interesting fact that in Victorian England homosexual and transgender individuals and poets and theorists and sometimes prophets were referred to as Uranians. So it's anything that's considered an alternative. And right now, the growth of alternative paths, alternative solutions, alternative viewpoints during this time are not just rapidly showing up, It's that alternative experiences are part of a necessary big change for evolution. So back to personal life, there will be jolts and surprises in regards to your focus. Matters turn shocking and it's really the key to just go with it and see how your life becomes transformed in ways not exactly as you predicted, but thanks to the Jupiter conjunction are surprisingly better. All in all, this conjunction means your life is about to change in a big way and you might feel that, you might feel excitable or you could feel weirdly nervous within life right now. Both of those are entirely normal. It may seem as though everything is speeding up, like a liberating force offers a new course or a new path or greener pastures or there's some new fortune that comes somehow. The lifting of obstacles through rapid change, through sudden transformation. And the unexpected is just a mini revolution happening. Externally, it represents government overthrows, rebellion, bucking against authority. And personally, it's relocation, innovation. It's a sense of being different and going against the status quo. It's counter culture. It's more UFO sightings. It's more alien news. And this conjunction being in the sign of Taurus, these shocks suggest growth that results in more abundance and more stability and more beauty. That's the positive effects which are seen through practical matters first, with Taurus being a sign to take care of things like comforts. I can't get over how clearly cryptocurrency is going to be integrated into life more and more. There's a great value on money and the old way of handling it and a new way of handling it. It's always money when you're dealing with the Earth sign Taurus. So financial changes are abundant, and I've mentioned it before in previous episodes, I'll mention it again, lottery wins might be extra special over these next few days. And this conjunction drags, as in 
Jupiter and Uranus occupy 21 degrees together. This is where the conjunction happens. And then Jupiter moves into 22 degrees. And then Uranus moves into that degree too. So it's like they meet, it moves on, and then they meet again. And it has this sweeping effect that drags the luck and it lasts until they separate degrees around the 26th of April. And the shadow of this lasts until the 25th of May. This aspect also stands for possessions. It's a good time to build on what you have. It's an excellent time to invest in real estate or property if that's a thing. And I know that that doesn't seem, I don't know, likely given the economy, but there are some real big surprises in that sector coming up soon. Make sure to be stubborn with your individuality. Favour independence and doing things on your own, doing them your own way with a tough mind while still being, you know, honourable and responsible. Seize opportunity because such large-scale potential may not come back around until 2037, which is the next conjunction. That's the next time this cycle clicks over and it will be in Cancer, so that's going to be a relevant point mentioned in each zodiac horoscope. Consider listening to the reading for both your sun sign, your rising sign and your earth sign. The combination of all three of these could be super helpful in fine-tuning your particular experience. The sun sign is the sign that you know is your zodiac. The rising sign, you can use the calculator below to find out. And the earth sign is the sign opposite yours on the wheel. I'll mention that in each horoscope. And to support you with the potentials, each of those horoscope readings are timestamped below for your convenience. For Aries, this conjunction is the push to grow, not just as an individual, but to also increase your possessions and assets. And to do so, you might find an opportunity to capitalise on your current resources. This might be with a goal to investing, maybe investing in a home, which by 2037 becomes twice the price you bought it for. It could be also a collaborative investment or project or something where you become a household name by 2037. It could be exploring crypto if that suits you, or spending money on booking future travel, which turns out to be incredibly lucky and fortunate when you go on those trips. Maybe your explorations and travel wind up as an indicator of where you're meant to live in the future by that future date of 2037. Not that it's going to take that long to find where you fit in, but that by that time there will be no more needing to move or explore, you'll have gathered so much experience of the world and different cultures and possibilities that you will be this wisdom-filled guru in all worldly matters. Desire must meet with ambition so that you can devise a long-term plan. There's freedom as the main focus. Your finances are working towards offering you exactly that if you use your money wisely. Be cautious about spending too much or being too generous as that could hurt you along the way. For Taurus, this is pure rebel energy and life insists that you follow it and you develop it in your own way. This is all working towards you writing or sharing a story of your experiences which will be ready for release in 2037. So this is like the path to success. This is like the whole shebang of you going from the bottom to the top. And the bottom doesn't mean a negative situation necessarily. It could be that you're at the bottom of something that you've never experienced or gone through before. Maybe you were the eternal bachelor and you're now surprisingly ready to settle down or the career individual that might be ready to turn in the hustle for a homestead. This is a rebellious step along your way. This is the path to discovering a new future entirely different from everything you've thought you were going for in the run-up to this point. It's very chrysalis transformation and can put you very tightly in connection and entwined with new people, foreign people, foreign places. And your journey of change irritates people, which I'm sure will become a vital part of your story. Expect to take a completely different path and it to build into something noteworthy for your future. Gemini, there could be some fresh limitations show up. 
And this is quite interesting given that Uranus is a freedom planet. And right here we're seeing restrictions because of where this is happening relative to your sun sign. There might be anxiety around restricted freedom or just some incredible sensitivity to other people's pains and problems that leaks into your experience somehow. The best presentation of this is if you are involved in contributing to solving a bigger scale problem, maybe like some charitable or noble work, then this is kind of like a karmic payoff. And the payoff may involve someone who you identify as a responsibility in your life, a heavy responsibility that you're already aware of in the form of a person. Maybe someone who has kept you constrained. Or it's the idea of a debt being paid energetically or literally that will allow you more freedom come 2037. And it starts a fresh cycle in you being able to support yourself and others in between the time of now and then. Where now is learning about the basics of how to get to that position through decrease, through change of material pursuits, through giving up things and dealing with enemy energy. Your path to financial abundance and stability is going to involve a journey of sacrifice. And not creepy sacrifice, I realise that sounded kind of out there. But giving up things that you know hurt your progress. For Cancer, this aspect is about freedom and reaching your objectives and keeping your eyes on bigger future goals. And the goals you seek are for the purpose of security and independence so that you don't have to rely on others. You've got high hopes and specific expectations and you will reach any target you set up if you carefully and diligently prepare and you plan the process and you then go ahead with those plans. Don't get stuck in the analysis paralysis stage. This might mean having to go and do something alone if others aren't at the same pace as you, if people are holding you back. This could be working on a project privately. Only you can do what's needed to get what you want out of life. No one else is there to help you with that. And you may have learnt this the challenging way. So this could be a nudge to pursue your interests and ignore others. And as much as collaboration is a positive, it might be time to stop waiting for that support. And waiting is no good. The worst word in your vocabulary right now is tomorrow. Don't think that you can always rely on tomorrow. Get organised today. In fact, every morning a cancer should write out this plan of action where you list what you need to do to get the full benefit of your resources, such as energy, money and time for that 24 hour period. Changes in your daily habits is really the main MO here. And the cycle says that you must change everything you do on a daily basis because Jupiter rules your sixth house and Jupiter is involved in this conjunction. And you might want to look back to 2011 for some hints on things that you maybe let go of that you should pick back up around now. You can accomplish anything you want as long as you understand how these things work, these three things, money, energy and time, work for the day. The bonus here is the next Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is in your sign of Cancer in 2037, which is a complete new lease of life and full independence that you spend between now and then growing during this cycle. Leo, self-confidence grows for you thanks to this conjunction and it's confidence that's going to help you every step moving forward. Plus, I guess, a little bit of restraint where it comes to money and energy and not overextending yourself in those things. It's important to stay well informed of what's trending in the world. That's vital for your career. Chances are, if you are well informed, then you'll achieve exactly what you need to achieve. You are the most individual of signs, and it can be a burden when your freedom is clipped by demands that don't fit you. Looking for collaboration and looking for connection with people should not be draining, and it shouldn't be a game. And one of the main lessons here for you is that there are no free rides to the top. And that is for you with someone else. But that's also someone else looking for a free ride through you. And you may have to shake off some conditioning from your earlier years that say 
that you must be in a relationship or that you must do this tradition or that tradition to make progress up this ladder of life or to make a name for yourself out in the world. The 2037 cycle is likely to bring a big family matter forward. So making sure you align with your heritage and tradition. And if that's not healthy for you, then creating your own versions of those, creating new traditions is what's going to be most helpful during this cycle in building your status out in the world. Virgo, your freedom is attached to your level of knowledge. And whether it's knowledge from like book smarts and education or from news, things like world news, what you know in your mind is the foundation of what you experience in your reality. Your faith is limitless and you can accomplish anything. So maybe you are considering some educational path, some official educational path, maybe some kind of economical or public serving topic. And this is about you succeeding where others have failed in a very special subject matter. Like maybe you can innovate economy matters moving forward with some structural education in your pocket. You are one of the Zodiac's best learners. And your part in rebuilding the future is likely to become more and more clear. You might very well be part of creating a new set of established rules and and laws in the future. Like 2037 is said to be so very different in the world when it comes to things like health, wealth, social energy, media, law and rules. And it's like you're part of rebuilding the breakdown in one of those areas. You may be some kind of social leader by that time which means strengthening your educational foundation in some or all of those areas now. So follow your call in health, wealth, economy, media or law coming up for this cycle and be part of the leadership group developing to take care of the future in the next 10 years. Libra, your talent for connecting with and understanding people is your luck magnet. And a natural part of having such a talent for helping others with their problems means that you will often be invited into others' problems. And this might not be all that bad. You might have an interest in what motivates people and gets them going. Although sometimes you might have a difficult time understanding how people can't be naturally more motivated themselves because you feel like an existential motivation. So there are going to be others along the way that reject your help, despite the help maybe being exactly what they need. And this is just fractal energy working to align you better with your people. It seems like this current cycle is to do with helping someone who you are deeply, deeply connected with, someone that you have a very spiritual or literal tie with who seems to be going through a situation and by proxy, this becomes your situation too. You can become a guarantor for someone or elected to make more decisions on behalf of their life as they surrender and completely follow your lead. And this might be something that you've been waiting for. And it's cyclical repercussions lasting through to 2037 result in a complete and utter take charge energy. This reputation and this status where you wind up becoming a leader in a particular field of interest because of your vast experience. And not only that, but you rule a certain group of people and are able to live a life more fun because of the potential for travel that this cycle allows. Scorpio, your connections with others is in this really interesting place right now and you value progressive people, you value people who think like you, you enjoy mutual energy and admire people who achieve things of themselves. This can sometimes turn competitive But that's often a sign of low self-confidence if that does occur, which may just be a message to turn inwards if you find yourself competing with people. Or it could be discomfort at others setting rules and doing things that you just totally don't agree with. This aspect highlights your relationships entirely and it's through connection with others in business and personal matters that you experience growth. It's like this reciprocal energy you give to those that you get from and you get from those that you give to through somebody else you get to look at your own finances this could be someone helping you or rewarding you or someone paying you back something that they owe you it might be that someone in your family strikes it big and they get lucky or not lucky but they start getting benefits from their efforts 
and that finds a way to you. And if it's not a person sharing their fortune and their luck, this might be value of your home going up and you might want to cash in on that. Or something right in your home space that offers super, super sized prosperity. And by 2037, a whole new lifestyle and horizon is the potential. And a truth from now has this domino effect where you might cash in on some knowledge and use it to your benefit and stabilise your financial and home-based future from here on in, through and with someone else. Sagittarius, your ruling planet Jupiter is involved in this conjunction, which makes it a lot more personal and pleasant. It's really lovely closing out from 2011 till now, where home life matters may have been this dragging experience, or maybe pleasant, but either way, the focus was about where you live and who you live with and what you want out of a future living space and environment. Your health, your wellness habits are locked in focus and it's a time of working hard on those, like really, really hard, with determination to create stability of your own. And maybe if family have taken care of you in the past, now you want to take care of them. Or another perspective, if you felt controlled or restricted by family or similar, now you want out of that and you want control of your own life without feeling like you need to rely on others or adhere to and satisfy this requirement of you. You turn into this super responsible, self-controlled, disciplined individual and part of that might be an increased interest in your physical fitness. Part of being an epic problem solver is having the physical ability to do so. And a new exciting job could be budding. This is what may grow over this multi-year cycle taking you to 2037 where you become like a real estate mogul or a well-known chef or some kind of super professional top of your industry whatever it is it's likely that you're starting afresh it's not going to be something you're already good at or that you're already involved in and you owe it to yourself to turn down the volume of those who have tried to control you for their needs instead of support you in yours and to now persist towards your independence which happens through a new job or work path that you follow up soon For Capricorn, the enthusiasm for getting things done that you have, your natural working hard energy is powered up. There are and always will be unlimited directions and avenues for you to take because such is the life of the mountain goat at the top. Just try not to waste your creative resources on helping others. Also hold back on the desire to do everything all at once. Conserve and use your energy in order of what's most important to you or things that make the most of your unique and unusual gifts like what is it that you do that no one else can do the way that you do this might be something that you've been putting off or maybe it's something connected to a talent or a skill from back in 2011 that you're not using enough there could be arguments and self-sabotage or people who literally prevent you from doing what you should be doing and they will pose as caring people It will look like they just have your best interests at heart, but be careful where others are leading you because people may be superimposing their values onto you and guilting you for not feeling the same. Or a situation of you being or someone attempting to lead you off track. Don't get sidelined by indulgences or even things like recreational stuff. That's not to say don't kick back and relax, absolutely do. Just make sure that you're doing things creatively to grow your experience and life. By 2037, you could become acutely aware of somebody who is really, really good for you or somebody who is really, really bad for you in life. And either way, such a revelation that grows over these next few years might be welcome. Aquarius, this cycle is going to bring up or bring back stuff to do with your childhood. And if it's not your childhood, then it's to do with where you live. You will become aware of whether you are or are not comfortable in your current living scenario and if it lacks warmth and affection and happiness and material security and all that good stuff then you'll maybe shock and surprise everyone by switching up life entirely. Self-sufficiency is really the goal. You hold responsibility for making your own life and as long as you avoid moping or giving into the feelings of low emotion and feeling down because they will overtake you and lead you off track 
If you avoid giving into those, you will achieve everything that you set out to achieve, especially where it comes to figuring out where you want to live. There's some residual stuff in your psyche, either from being overprotected or you yourself are overprotective. You want to find your place in the world rather than be told where it is. And there's this idea of being stuck and it's more like wanting to wait until things are perfect before taking action. And that's not how things work the best. You do well to take any step forward and instead of worrying that it's perfect, understand that it either is ideal and yeah, you're where you need to be, or if it's not ideal, then it's just a stepping stone along the way. Obligations to family or even a lease or a mortgage or something similar can act as a block to your next step. And this is especially true if you are locked up fulfilling tasks that are not yours to fulfill or you're stuck in something or you can't find that new lease. Be willing to challenge the box that you've been putting and be willing to absolutely overthrow your own current position. Of course, listen to some other suggestions from other people because opportunities reach you that way, but don't take everyone's word as your truth. It may be the luckiest thing yet for you to consider moving. Just be sure to maintain a low profile while you find the things that fit your life with your approval, not the approval of others. And come 2037, you'll be in this awesomely perfect location, not needing to go anywhere else, where your next focus becomes maximizing and finding luck with health, habits and job. Pisces, there may have been times of lack, of follow through, where you have these brilliant ideas and such, but you don't take full advantage of them. This might be because you have the idea of not wanting to take unnecessary risks, which does make sense. But this aspect seems to be all about your mind and how you use it to your advantage or disadvantage. This is a bit of a rebellious attitude within you. And your opinions are your opinions and whomever goes against them should beware. You don't have a problem in stating your position. And yeah, you can accept different thought processes, but it won't sway you on yours. There might be a situation that comes up where you want to give your opinion, but it hasn't been requested. Or you go ahead and give your opinion, but it falls flat. And it could feel like your genius isn't appreciated. And as a result, there could be some silent treatment or verbal blow ups and arguments of sorts. This might transfer to you receiving some shocking paperwork too, or just some shocking news about monies, values, assets or costs. Or maybe you've previously shared your values and possessions with others and that's coming to a close. Expect some news that comes completely out of left field and either has you wishing that you could take back something you said or wishing that someone else would take back something that they said. Maybe a conversation that happened recently or happens now has this lasting impact through to 2037. And it has this effect of surprising, rippling developments of detachment and freedom. Or it reopens some unfinished business that you've been ignoring. That's it for this episode. Thanks for joining me through this analysis. And don't forget that the luckiest days are from April 20th to the 25th. But we are still firmly in a Mercury retrograde. Another keep your lucky developments quiet symbol. Or if you don't feel like pushing your luck, then hold off until the 26th where the coast is Mercury retrograde clear. Until next time, bye!